damn it. Not getting a microphone. I know. Welcome into Rami and Drew live episode. What is this? Seven, 17. I am Rami Mekloff. That is Drew Flaggy. We are live, Drew Flaggy, after the, uh, yeah, 17. I forgot to make like a new banner and stuff after we had Bart on earlier today. Bart Winkler was on earlier today. Go and check that out. Find us on uh, YouTube, Spotify, and now Apple Podcast as well. But uh, Bucks win today, 112 to 195. Drew Flaggy. And uh, Giannis making statements like I I feel like people don't mention Giannis in the uh, by the way, we should we should address your your sleevelessness before we get into anything. That was a that was a bit following up on, on a discussion earlier when we had Bart on the show and uh, I had on a Superman shirt, which Bart made fun of, which then I subsequently uh, spilled vegetable curry on. So I had to change shirts and I was like pander to the audience when you change shirts. So I put on this Bucks shirt. And uh, Drew uh, put on a, uh, a a basketball jersey and no sleeves underneath. Also, as as a like a like a what it, what a callback to our conversation earlier today. And now, yeah, now you're. I expected you. I expected you to be dressed like Superman because you thought you were Superman. So I'm dressed like Dame Lillard now. <laughs> yeah, but the joke doesn't work. The joke doesn't work because I changed shirts. And I Dude, swear you spilled your dinner to you on your Superman shirt. You're literally the man of meal. <laughs> I, I said earlier, I was like, I wasn't trying to say I'm I'm very average man. I am not Superman at all. I'm a very average man. I'm just a fan of Superman. You're That's all even, it is. But like I was saying, you're not even a Superman. Superman. You're you're a curry man. <laughs> it's not even a soup. The shirt's laying right over there with just vegetable curry, right, right on the collar. But anyways, uh, Yad is making a statement tonight. And uh, like, in, I mean, he doesn't get, really get mentioned in the MVP discussion somehow as often as won't. I feel like he should. But uh, he was going up against the, the the against, you know, another MVP candidate tonight. And I, I would say that uh, he came out on top in the box score and and in the scoreboard. I think that the guy that came out on top tonight was Joel Embiid, honestly, because uh, these two clowns that played tonight, honestly, they're they're not they don't have the heart. They got both their knees right now. They, you know, dude, like seriously, the the narratives are gonna legitimately be all over the place. Where it's gonna be like, yeah, but Giannis's team knocked down all their shots. Like Jokic had to carry his entire team to scoring under a hundred points. It was like, oh, how how are you supposed to be the MVP if you don't score points? Like that's seriously the it, joke. It does seem like people. Giannis. It's it's it it's does like seem Giannis, like people will Giannis do like, like some mental gymnastics. Games. It does seem like people will do some mental gymnastics to not include Giannis in the MVP discussion, and 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 to and to you know pump up other guys in the MVP discussion. I don't understand it, man. I don't know. I don't know what it is, and I don't know. Drew, I, th- I think on some level, it's probably not as bad as we make it out to be because, you know, we're probably a little bit sensitive to it at, in terms of any criticism or any any lack of acknowledgement for Giannis. But also at the same time, like, like I do think that it is it's real, man. Like people don't talk about Giannis the way that they talk about some of these other guys around the league. No, and it's because whatever, he's not a shooter, even though his mid range is really coming around like it's he's not as. I don't even know how you can't say that he's not as flashy as some of these other guys. Like, like the dunks he has are insane on a nightly basis. The moves he does, the way he slithers through everybody is just, it's unreal. And it's like, people are like, oh, he traveled. No, he like it's like you watch his feet. He doesn't drag his foot. He doesn't leave his pivot. He, like, he is one of the few guys that doesn't leave his pivot more than anybody in the league. I didn't want to get into the negatives of this game because there are things that I want to get fired up about. Like Scott Foster, I know we're not supposed to slander people, but he's a terrorist. Um, no, guy, no, 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 no. He's no, not. He is. <laughs> no, he's not. He's a terrible yeah. referee. He's a terrible referee. He's not a terrorist. On behalf of the Rami and Drew show, he is not a terrorist. Carry <laughs> on behalf of the Rami portion. You're the one that's trying to get work. I'm the one here that's like, I'm going to say what's on my mind. I have not. But that is not true. Oh, dang. I put up the wrong banner. Has that been up there this whole time? 
<laughs> Dude, Scott, like that was okay. That first half of that game was officiated like shit. We can just say that. Like, I don't want to be the but the refs guy again, but it's like that was okay. Here, here's the thing. I've been watching because of because of like doing parlays and everything. I've been watching a lot of games that aren't Bucks games, and it, fuck me if 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 Trey Young doesn't get all those continuation calls that Dame Lillard just gets hammered on. Dudes jump on Damian Lillard's back. And he gets no continuation call. They're like, oh, it wasn't a shooting foul. It wasn't this. Dame Lillard gets no whistles at home. And Trey Young, whose team is absolute dog shit, gets so many calls. It's actually kind of getting annoying. And then you see Scott Foster. Oh, all right, Bobby Portis hung on the rim. Well, how many times, and I don't want to, is Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum does it all the time. And call it like, Oh, he's protecting his legs because yeah, he that was get a terrible call. Thing. Marcus Johnson was not happy about that. No, Marcus Johnson flat out said it. I tweeted that like Marcus Johnson, like with no timeouts left after the first, you know, the first challenge or uh, no, no challenges left. Marcus Johnson had no choice but to say that was just a bad call. They couldn't go to Secaucus on this one. It was like they actually had to be like, mm-hmm. this was a bad call. Scott Foster was absolutely terrible tonight. Was- um, just. Also, the other thing, okay, here, I want to say this, too. Giannis, again, what did he do? 12, he went to the line 12 times? Yeah, yep, more things you're angry about after a damn near 20. You're, you got more things you're angry about after a damn near 20-point win over the reigning champs? No, Go actually, ahead. This, is, this is great on the Bucks defense. Jokic only went to the line three times. Oh. He was one for three. So Really? I didn't, even, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, he because he didn't come back in in the fourth quarter. So, uh, yeah, he was one for oh, three from true. the line, and I, Giannis was like what seven for eleven or seven for twelve? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Yeah, Something Giannis like got to the line. Jokic didn't. Like the Bucks did a really good job not following uh, Jokic and forcing him to pass the guys who they were also giving a hard time. And to say more positive things here, Malik Beasley's defense. I'm going to harp on it every time because I'm the one that gave him an F on defense for the first half of the season. Malik Beasley's defense, fantastic in transition tonight. I'll specifically pick out transition. Yeah, dude, there were a couple of times there were there were a couple of times tonight where I noticed that too, Drew. And quite frankly, um, I didn't think he was capable. Like I, 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 I didn't think Malik Beasley. And look, man, I don't know. I still don't know if he's like a a, a plus defender. You know what I mean? But I, I, I didn't think I didn't think he was capable. I, I was like, this isn't Adrian Griffin's fault. This isn't anything coaching is going to fix. He's just not a good defender, and he's not going to be a good defender. And since Adrian Griffin has been fired, like first it was your guy, Prunt Dog, that got the best out of him. And and now since Doc Rivers has taken over, the guy, the the guy is an improved defensive player, which quite frankly, I like I said, I didn't think I didn't think was really possible, but he is. He's he's he you've seen improvement from him on that side of the floor. And it's it, it's like it's like we talked about a couple times. The amount of times that guys were just confused at where they were supposed to be, this is just simplified. Like defense, that's all mm-hmm. this is. This yep. simplified man to man guys are doing simple switches, they're not doing anything crazy. You know, some like the thing I like that Doc is mostly doing is having guys like Giannis meet, uh, like the best like ball handler on their team at the point of attack and then dropping them. So it's like you don't have a guy with a full head of steam going at guys like Malik Beasley or Dame. Also, Dame getting two early fouls, Giannis, two early fouls. Giannis, maybe okay. The Dame, the second Dame foul, what the hell was that? Like, I mean, they removed Dame from basically the, in the like the first half of that game, which is shit fouls. And it's like Dame's not the strongest defender, but he also he's been much more active defensively, and he does not put his hands on people almost to stop himself from not getting removed from games because he's always had to be the offensive load guy. So it's like, I don't know. That was like those are the things that were frustrating tonight, but like that was a that felt that win felt good. That felt vindicating, because my phone didn't vibrate that entire game. I didn't get anybody hitting me. Marcus up. Johnson said, "What?" Marcus Johnson said, "I forget which. What was the other win that he said that this was that this was up there with? But he said this was the best or second best win so far of the regular season. And I'm not the greatest uh, in terms of pulling those out of my the old memory file, Drew. I'm getting old." And I'm not the greatest at, at pulling up the old memory file on what was the best win, but in the moment, 
yeah, man, this feels really damn good to do this to to the reigning champs and 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 a guy who's who's in the in contention for MVP. I don't know if this changes the way Giannis is treated or regarded in the MVP race, but if not, it certainly it it starts the process. It starts the ball rolling in in that direction. I think eyes are on this game when you're going up against the Nuggets and Jokic. And and honestly, with my bias toward or against ESPN and stuff, no, I think this one gets swept under the rug. This game will get covered for maybe a minute tomorrow morning. You know, th- this this one's going to get swept under. Like uh, Cleveland had a uh, – what, did Cleveland just play Philly tonight or something? They're going to be going at the new mm-hmm. look, look Sixers. They're going to be beating the Tyrese Maxey drum. Jared Allen had, I think, 21 points. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had a 36-point game. So it's like they're going to sit there and be like, oh, there was a shootout in uh, Cleveland. You know, Cleveland dropped on the home court. Their eight-game win streak's over now. They'll talk about that game. They're not going to talk about Jokic because – what they want is they want Embiid to repeat now. And it's not going to happen. He's not going to meet the requirement for games played. So then it's going to fall back to Jokic. And it's like, oh, well, maybe Jokic just could have potentially four years in a row. You know, oh, it could have been the first time ever. Giannis is so far below what they want to talk about because they have – they. I, I truly honestly do believe that ESPN fucking hates what the Bucks have built here. They don't like this. They See, don't, don't like that. Dame Lillard wasn't supposed to be here. Chris Middleton is supposed yeah. to be some second round pick bum that no one cares about. Like it's like Brooke Lopez is supposed to be old and washed with a bad back. They don't want this. They wanted Giannis out of here. They were trying to shop Giannis to Miami. I don't They're think to- I don't think they necessarily they do want they do want Giannis out of here. I, th- I think some people would prefer to see him in a bigger market. I don't think that they that they hate the Bucks because of that or that they don't want this to work. If they hate anything about it. And this, this, and and I think Bart sort of shined a light on this. And again, if you're just tuning in to us live, Rami and Drew show, find us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And we had Bart Winkler on earlier today. But I remember him tweeting, like right after the Dame trade, that what what upsets the Woges and the Shams of the world, and and maybe it it gives it gives like a little bit of a bite or an edge to the way that they're covered or windhorsed is that they don't know what the Bucks are doing. Like they, they they got sources inside other organizations and they seem to kind of be in the dark when it comes to the Bucks and a lot of the stuff that they do and that's not good for their business. That's just not good for what they do for a living. So that- it probably that probably gets under their skin, but I don't think they they're actively they hate the Bucks or they're actively rooting against the Bucks necessarily. I don't necessarily agree with you on that because I, I don't think it's Woj. I don't think Woj necessarily cares. I don't think Shams really cares. Like those guys are just insiders and they're just trying to, you know, they, they got their, their tweets and everything and they're reliable and everybody kind of likes them. Windhorse only has a job because he broke the LeBron James trade. He, he's keeping, he, he broke the LeBron James trade. Well, he's he, been, it, he's been riding LeBron's coattails since high school, man. Right? He's been covering yeah. him for, for that long. Or, or yeah, the LeBron free agency thing. He's the one that broke that. Like that was that was yeah. all him. Like Wendy has a job. Like Wendy is, you know, uh, he would probably be the general manager of a McDonald's somewhere. Honestly, he wasn't doing this shit. The guys that I'm saying, like it's the former players that don't like this Bucks thing. I'm talking about Kendrick Perkins. I'm talking about all those guys that are not like Chuck Shack, Ernie See, Johnson. Like, like you might not. Not like, like Kendrick Perkins, but I remember Kendrick Perkins saying that the Bucks p- picking the Bucks to win the championship in multiple seasons. Like I don't, I, yeah. I just don't see it. Like, so, like remember, dude, did you see last week at the trade deadline when you know he was Kendrick Perkins is just the loudest guy in the room. He's basically the Drew Flaggy of that show. So he's always well, yeah. About it and what what he's doing, like he's yelling about just like like the the Knicks are the second best team in the fucking East now. It's like, oh, the Knicks are the best team. Oh, because of what? Because, you know, they they went and got Bohan Bogdanovich or something. Oh, my God, that's a name that strikes fear into the hearts of every YMCA pickup game. But, like, other than that, like, who fucking cares? And he's all mad. It's like, he, he's sitting there, and then Austin Rivers was the one that was like, they're not better than the Bucks. And then it's like, oh, my God, Malika Andrews suddenly was like, I can speak up now. It's like because like they all started telling Kendrick Perkins that he's full of shit. And it's like it took one person to just be like, dude, knock it off. Like it's like you're gonna seriously root, you're gonna, you're gonna bet against Damian Lillard and Giannis. Giannis has already been there. 
because you got Boyan Bogdanovich. Yeah, you're going to bet against Giannis and Dame because you got Boyan Bogdanovich. It it does get ridiculous and out of hand, but there, I mean, there are bad takes of all kinds for or against all kinds of teams across every sport on every platform. You know what I mean? These guys are they yeah. and and I'm and I'm I've I've been guilty of it myself. If I'm being honest, like you you're here to entertain, man, and 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 like outlandish opinions sometimes entertain you know what i mean but but kendrick perkins has had outlandish opinions for and against the bucks like i said i've heard him pick them to win a championship on multiple occasions in multiple seasons i will agree with you i think i said it to start the show i don't think Giannis gets the run that he should in the mvp discussion and narrative so far this year I, and if he does end up winning it, there'll be a lot of yeah, buts around it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but Embiid was hurt. Yeah, but Tyrese Halbert and blah, blah, blah. And there'll, there'll be other yeah, buts that come along the way. But I think he he's, he's as deserving as anybody. And people will be like, well, I mean, look at everything that happened with Adrian Griffin. Dude, I would say that's that's a check mark in his favor, if anything, because despite the fact that you had a head coach that got fired, you're, you're third in the Eastern Conference right now. You were second in the Eastern Conference for most of the season. They've had the fourth or fifth best record in the NBA for most of the season. He's held this thing together. He's more valuable this season than he's ever fucking been. You know what I mean? Oh. Like the, you, you can't hold any underachievement or whatever, whatever has gone on with the Bucks against him. If anything, it's it's an argument for him in the MVP discussion. And I, I don't. You might be right. It might not move the needle at all tonight. What he did head to head against Jokic, another MVP candidate. But I hope it does. I hope it at least starts to change tonight. Well, of course, I hope it changes the thing. I would love for Giannis to win it again. He's our guy. Like, dude, he's our franchise. He's gonna probably be the greatest player to ever play for the Bucks. He's awesome. Like, there's there's he not enough is, good yeah. things. There's not enough good things you can say about what he does out there. Like, he's. He's like seriously the heart and soul of that team. He will dr- like I've said multiple times. He's going to drag them across the finish line if guys are having a bad night. It's going to be him. I, I don't necessarily yeah. know that anybody else in that roster can necessarily put it on their shoulders and just do it. But like he is the guy, and I guess Dame would be the second one, dude. But I have more faith in just a willpower win coming out of Giannis than a finesse win out of Damian Lillard, and that's not a knock against Dame. It's just Giannis is just a different. He's just a whole different beast that no one else has. Dame needs He's to so much- wake up, though, and and I do want to keep it positive after this one tonight. But uh, and and you know what? Like and you Scott you've Parker said this, started, Drew, and like this one, Dame started off great. The way the ball was moving, like all that. I think you just froze. But he ended up. No. He ended up what six? I, I don't know what he finished. He ended up six of fifteen. Six of fifteen right. with the eighteen with eighteen points. And that's not that's not a bad night, man. But I need and and you you've talked about this before. I and I'm I'm somewhat guilty of it. But I never played organized <laughs> basketball. I, I'm not I'm I'm not the most educated when it comes to X's and O's. I would say I have more I have more knowledge and expertise in that area when it comes to football and baseball. But so I don't like to me. It seemed like Dame needed to be more involved, and Dame needed to be more aggressive and assertive in being more involved in the offense. And when Doc Rivers came in, he said, like, I need him to be a little bit more assertive and to start remembering he's Dame. And he even, he pointed out, and I saw this play out exactly tonight. I think it was in the second quarter in the first half. He said, I'm seeing too often Dame go up and have a good shot and then see somebody else open and defer to their good shot when he should just take it and he did that and he did that tonight he he had an easy he had an easy like floater in the lane i think it was bobby portis off off in the corner and he dished it out to bobby portis and he missed and like it's cool that he's trying to play within the framework and the system and everything but he's fucking dame lillard dude just be i want dame lillard shooting 20 shots at least four out of every five nights and it seems like these 12 and 15 shot nights are way way too common well, okay, so I'll, I'll actually go in defense of Dame because so many times, like, I've been shitting on him, even though I'm literally sitting here wearing the Dame Lillard jersey, because I'm waiting on just the game where he goes nuclear. I'm waiting on it. Me too. But 
it's, and it's going to be awesome when he does it. Like, it's going to be the same thing as him hitting a game winner against Sacramento. It's going to rule when you see Dame Lillard put up 50 points in a game. Like, it's, it's going to look easy for him the night he does it. But, like, the whole thing, it's like, they took away, like, to, to Denver's credit, they took away so many good shots from him two weeks ago when we played them. And that was with Chris mm-hmm. Middleton on the floor. They took away a lot of shots from both of those guys with just really great defense. And the Bucks did adjust tonight, and Dame was bringing that ball up. The, the offense was running through Dame the way all these people wanted it to, and he was directing traffic. He was dishing the ball places. He was making quick decisions, and he was getting his shots too. It's just that early foul trouble is what got him out of the game. I think he would have been in more of a rhythm. He would have played more of that game had he not gotten in foul trouble. And that's where those ticky-tack stupid fouls do come in. Like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna meme and be the angry yeah, guy yeah. Scott Foster. But, like, yeah, he did alter how the game was played for Damian Lillard. Like, he took him out of that game. Those foul calls were bad in the first half. So it's like I, I don't know. Like I'm I'm it happy was, with how he was. Yeah, that was there was some bad officiating going on. Uh, <laughs> got a, a comment here on the YouTube page from Hottest of Jacobs Jacob. He says to anyone who wanted the mayor traded, shame on you and your family. And he's talking about uh Bobby Portis, by the way. Who who? Yeah, yeah. he did have he had a, he had a solid night tonight. Thirteen points in twenty six minutes, eight rebounds, six of fourteen shooting. I will take that from Bobby Portis. That's that's a that's a solid night. That's all. I think there are two different camps of people that wanted Bobby Portis traded. There were there were the two things. There were the people like me who I wanted Bobby Portis traded only if it netted something in return that was of greater value, like packaging up a couple guys with him that would give us a bigger need on the team. I have said, you know, more I'm more of a culture guy than a lot of people are. I think trading Bobby Portis for the sake of trading him is an absolute horrible move like i think especially mid-season like i could entertain it in the offseason to trade contracts and maybe you get a guy you know that we're gonna have three years of control under or something like that two or three years after bobby portis so you don't have to pay a pay increase or something like that but like unless you have to get rid of a guy like him i'm not about trading him um there i think were people that saw bobby portis having these nights where he was scoring four points or he wasn't rebounding well and his defense was terrible, that those people automatically, those were the new fans that were like, oh, he sucks, he's terrible, get rid of him. It's like, no, Bobby Portis was never a player that I I would have ever called a bad player. I thought he made no. bad decisions and a lot of selfish decisions, especially when he wasn't passing, because he has been passing out of the post more now, too. That's a big thing that I think Doc really got here, that's like, you need to find those other guys that are out there, because you have shooters on this team. And I thought the shot selection that Bobby Portis had tonight was very good. I thought that the energy he brought was very good. I liked the minutes that he was playing with Pat Beverly. I thought those were awesome. Like, that's... I think Bobby Portis. I've, I've, well, we've talked about it all season. Bobby Portis was having a a subpar season, a, a, a below yeah. expectations for what we expect from Bobby Portis. But at no point did I think like he was an anchor to this team or somebody that was necessarily a detriment to this team if you could if you could improve the team by trading him I, then then yeah I'm, I'm i'm open to those discussions but i didn't think that the team was necessarily worse because you had him you could make that argument for pat Connaughton. you could you could certainly make that argument for pat Connaughton that he was that he was dragging this team down a little bit but i don't think that was necessarily the case with with bobby portis and, and the bucks didn't even think that was the case with Pat Connaughton, or he wouldn't, no. or he, I don't think he'd still be on this on this roster at this point. Well, then there was the thing. I, I think there's also two different camps on that one, where it's like Pat Connaughton. What were you going to get for him, honestly? Yeah. Like with the way that he was playing for most of the season with that contract, like w- what are you getting here? I said that if he was getting traded in some kind of package deal, he was going to be a guy that was going to go to a team that was in the tank for some picks that was going to end up getting waived. Like I thought that that's what that would be. It's like if you had to do yeah. a three trade to get somebody pat Connaughton goes somewhere for a couple second rounders or something like that and then those are your trade assets to go flip and go get like a dejounte murray or something but the hawks didn't get any offers for murray so that didn't really matter and then the mavericks were the ones apparently that approached the bucks about bobby portis for grant williams and it's like no like that was a terrible like that was a terrible <laughs> no absolutely trade. not no like, like that was <laughs> Floating around like the Bobby Portis rumored in talks. Yeah, it wasn't out of our mouths. 
No. That was the Mavericks that were sitting there. They were like, oh. That's the Mavericks going, we sure would like to trade Grant Williams for Bobby Portis. And and the reporter going, can I run with that? And they were like, yeah, sure, run with that. Yeah. No, so it's like the the people I say do, yeah, shame on all the people who said they wanted Bobby Portis traded because they said that he sucked. Shame on those people because that's yes. just not the case. But it's like if you can, like I said, if you can net something positive for that contract, because that was the most tradable contract that you could get a like a player of that quality back in return. Yeah, that's where I'm like I'm entertaining it, but I gotta really like the deal to want to do it. And hey, I mean, um... they got no like. Like, they weren't willing to pursue Wiggins for anything more, like, outside of, like, you know, like, because Bobby Portis was rumored in that trade. And it's like the Warriors just, they wanted so much more. And it's like, we weren't going to get anything else really in return from them. And it's like, so those talks fell apart. So I'm perfectly fine with Bobby Portis being the sixth man of this team going forward. I have no issue with him being here. And honestly, I'm happy that he's here because, yeah, I'm one of the fans that goes absolutely ballistic when he comes in. I love it. It's fun. He, it's a I party. love Bobby. There. And I and, and it's even more of a party with 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 Pat Bev on yeah. on the roster now. I saw somebody call him. You'll you'll appreciate this as as a comic book fan. And by the way, a lot of comic book talk in our discussion with Bart Winkler earlier <laughs> today, which was weird. It was a weird comic book. It talk. Was Superman shirt. It was it was it was fun. Um, but uh, oh, I forgot what I was forgot what I was just about to say. Yeah. Um, you're gonna compare him. Oh, uh, somebody compared. Somebody said he's he's Bizarro Drew Holiday. Like he's he's yeah. the evil Drew Holiday. I've, I've, heard, I've heard evil Drew Holiday. <laughs> but it's like Pat Beverly doesn't look like an evil person. Like it's just... <laughs> he's villainous. He's villainous. He's mischievous. You know what I mean? Sure. He likes to get. He, he likes to get under people's skin. He, he, reminds... he likes. He likes to cause trouble. He reminds me of like like a little brother. Like that's just there just to annoy you. Like that's it. It's like you can't say anything. I love the dude. Yeah, he's awesome. Like he's super cool. I love the I love the type that that you love to have on your team and you and and you hate him on the other team. You know what I mean? Those are my those are my favorite types of players. I tried to be that player in every sport I played growing up. Yeah, it's that that's just the Bobby Portis archetype. It's great. Yeah, I I saw that uh I saw that they were also for video game fans, they were calling Pat Beverly Wario. Uh they were calling him Wario Drew (laughs) Holland. Like it was just it was just every evil version of like the character. Like like, I don't know, like I love that. I like the people that the people that were pearl clutching, like (gasps) he's wearing 21. Oh, like, yeah, man, you can't retire. We can't retire every night. And I love Drew Holiday and you don't win that championship without him. And not only that, but he did a lot off the court for the community. I don't I don't I don't forget anything that Drew Holiday did or or have any any lesser feelings towards Drew Holiday than I did before. But come on, somebody was going to wear 21 again. He was he's they weren't going to retire Drew Holiday's number and certainly not a, the, the same season that he that he was traded from the team. Maybe one day, I don't know, because he won a championship. <laughs> Twenty one goes up in the rafters, but it's not up there now, and it's just a nope. number. Everybody if, relax. If they win it this year, they're retiring Pat Beverly. Now that would be funny if they retired Pat Beverly's number. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> like that would be that would be funny. But like, no, it's like okay, it's not like Pat Beverly didn't wear that number in college because he did. Yeah, he, he also has worn that number on almost every team he's played on yes. in the league. Like the only time yeah. he doesn't wear that number is if somebody already had it on the roster. That's kind of Pat Beverly's number, dude. Like it's fine. Like that happens across sports where guys just have their number, and it's usually issued to them regardless. Like it does. It doesn't matter. Like, dude, Paul George has worn thirteen because he because he's got his nickname PG thirteen. And now we have all the memes and jokes because they're wearing the because they wore the same number. We have we have the Wario, the Bizarro, all the all the fun all the fun memes and jokes. I've almost thought about getting like a piece of like packaging tape and putting it over my Drew Holiday, like the holiday part of my black jersey, and just writing Pat Bev on the back. <laughs> like I, I've just thought about doing that for like the rest <laughs> of the year. Like I haven't worn the holiday jersey since they traded them, so I'm you like, should well, definitely do that. I want to see that. Wow, that'd be fun. Hey, um. I, I got a I got a pee and I'm pretty sure my dog does too and my internet's gonna give out soon. But before we end the show, I did want to mention dude Brooke Lopez, who was already, I mean, doing 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 very well on the defensive end, even when the Bucks weren't as as a team under Adrian Griffin. I remember uh like a, a highlight. I don't know if it was necessarily highlights, but I remember a highlight reel of Brooke Lopez 
growing frustrated with with the defense and his role in it during the Adrian Griffin era. And tonight, man, there were multiple sequences where he single handedly like just just s- stopped and disrupted Denver's offense. And he looks more and more comfortable in in what they're doing defensively. And like I said, that's he was already doing fine defensively, but he's looking more and more comfortable in what they're doing and his role in it than than he was before the change. And that's bad news for the rest of the league because when when that guy is is in just the right spot on on a on a defense and in this Bucks defense, he's as good at disrupting an offense around the rim as anybody in this league right now. Uh, a Brooke Lopez early game block, like in the first quarter, is a tone setter for the entire yes. game. It seems yeah. like if Brooke can get that block early, that it just it changes the dynamic of the defense. And also, not for nothing, the Bucks did hold a team under a hundred points again. This is the worst defense in the NBA, according to a lot of analysts. And these guys held the Denver Nuggets, who okay. Jamal Murray got was was hurt, and so was uh who else? Who else went out? Was it Otto? No, uh, not Otto Porter. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. Did he go out? Or two yes. two players yeah, from Denver. No, oh, oh KCP went out. That's who. That's who went out. Um, I thought it was Michael Porter Jr. No, Michael no? Porter Jr. Okay. Played the game. Uh, no, it was it was KCP. So they had two guys go out with injuries. Like, but okay, fine. Like they had a couple yeah. days. They didn't play. Uh, they didn't play the last two game or pl- uh, play the last two days or something. They were kind of rested, but it's late in the season. Injury is going to creep up. But like the Bucks were also again without Chris Middleton. The Bucks played a very good game today, like from from like start to end. Like this was a very very good game for the Bucks. Like they never trailed in this one. Um, AJ Green phenomenal again. AJ Green the way he played defense on Jamal Murray was really good today. And put him in the three point contest. Let's just put him in the three point contest already. Let's quit AJ, fucking around. AJ Green went straight up against Jamal Murray a couple times, and Murray tried to knock him back, and he just stood in there and like he mm-hmm. could, like played great. Like those, I think that like Pat Connaughton's, you know, his minutes I think are going to AJ Green right now. Uh, it, I mean, and deservedly I so, and deservedly so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm glad they're open to that because I was concerned and I sent you these comments when I saw him. I was concerned by the comments of Doc Rivers saying, hey, we got to give Pat minutes because we got to get his confidence up because this is a guy that we're going to count on down the stretch. And I was like, oh, really? Are we? <laughs> well, is, that, is, that, is that really the plan, Doc? Please you know, tell me that ain't really the plan. If, if Pat Connaughton was playing playoff Pat basketball and stuff, I'm all for it. Like, cool. Like, I. There's, I don't want a player on this team to play bad. Like that's no, it. But like, same. Yeah, I'm not rooting against anybody play, on this team, so I can be right. If someone else is out hustling or out just making like the smart moves, knocking down the open shots when they get them, like paying off great passes and stuff. Like Malik Beasley missed that one, you know, that great pass that Giannis had behind the back. That was pretty. He missed that shot, and then Giannis fed him again, and he fucking he nailed it. Like it was great. So, so yeah, just just those guys just constantly paying off like it doesn't have to turn into Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs where you start forcing crap out there right it's like okay well I lost confidence in the one guy or Jordan Love what or, jo- or Jordan Love no Jordan Love is fine dude but like I no mean, it's, you know he you kind of did force hey. it in the playoffs I saw we saw we saw what we saw but yeah you don't want you don't want Giannis to sit there and try to force like I don't want Giannis bowling balling his way through everybody because that's how you get your legs hurt. Not it's like, every time. It's fun to watch every. It's fun to watch every once in a while, but not every time. You're not gonna. Right. You're not gonna. You're not gonna last very long doing it that way. No, but you space the floor better when you got Malik Beasley or AJ Green or Pat Connaughton. You you space the floor a lot better when you're making shots. True. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody I, would deny that or argue that. Since I'm doing this on my phone, like I haven't bookmarked. I, I had a couple bookmarked uh, things for the Rami's Bookmark Club. Oh, we'll do that. You know what? We'll do that. Are we doing a show tomorrow? I'll talk to you about this later. But we, if we do a show tomorrow, we'll, we'll do Rami's book, the latest Rami's bookmark club tomorrow. It's the, it's the hottest thing taking over the Internet. I know. I know you got to pee. But yeah, I was going to say my favorite one was somebody says, is it or somebody commented on like one of the Bucks pages and just said, is it just me or is Brooke Lopez washed? <laughs> God, it's my- all right. Those are my favorites. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, you know what? It's, on the internet. 
right, it is man. just you. It is it is just you, whoever said that. All right, Drew, any final thoughts before we wrap this thing up? No, this was uh this game made me very happy. This was this was a good Same. game. Miami's gonna be tough tomorrow. Are we gonna do live again tomorrow after Miami? Oh yeah, they do play tomorrow. Fuck it. Yeah, we'll go live after Miami. Yeah, Let's do this. A- Fuck it. We'll do it live. Dave and Giannis didn't have to play heavy minutes in this game, so you know they should be rested to go against Miami, who's been on the struggle bus for a while. You know what? Good day for good day for the Bucks and good day for the Rami and Drew show. I think I think we put in two two solid shows today. Played a double header. We had Bart Winkler earlier. That was hilarious. That's that's as hard as I've laughed in one of these podcasts yet. Folks should go and check that out. You can follow us on uh, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple, as you see down there across the bottom of the show if you're watching us live. Uh, so go back and check that out. Please follow, like, subscribe, rate, review, do all the things to help us grow this thing. This has been Rami and Drew, episode 17 live. And yeah, sure, why not? We'll be back with episode 18 tomorrow after they take on the Miami Heat. That's Drew Flaggy. I am Rami Makloff. We will talk to you again tomorrow. Drew, I will talk to you again tomorrow, sir. Woo. All right. Talk to you then. Apparently Ric Flair.